All right, let's try out my RX 6800 XT. I've already tried this out on a few GPUs, including my RTX 3080, which in editing, I might be splicing in side by side here to see if there's any performance differences. Uh, because, you know, even though the 3080 generally does better at 4K, just like slightly, there's also some differences in driver overhead between NVIDIA and AMD. And since a lot of times in this demo, I'm actually being limited by the CPU or RAM or asset streaming or something, a lot of times it's not actually a GPU limit, even though currently we're at the maxed out, well, maybe not maxed out, the, the, the three settings in the config file, which is what it defaults to. And this is the native 4K resolution. So if you're seeing any differences between the two, interesting. I'm putting those in in editing, but I'm doing my voiceover live. Anyway, uh, argue about it in the comments section, and I'm going to go ahead and start flying around. I'm very curious if we still see the same kinds of frame rate drops and low GPU utilization that I was getting on my NVIDIA system. Well, looks like we are indeed dropping to, yeah, into the 80% range on GPU utilization. So it does still seem like there are other limits going on here besides just the GPU. And from what I remember on my 3080 testing, we were getting similar results where the dips were into the mid 30s, even to around 30 FPS, but kind of a little more stably just kind of running down the scene here, kind of into the mid 40s. Look at the GPU utilization. I saw it as low as 60% there for a bit. So yeah, it's, it's definitely some other kind of limit happening here, which um, I mean, I think makes sense because this, this is a demo, guys. This isn't a game. So part of what they're demonstrating, I think, is the simulation of this entire city. So you can see this is using a huge amount of threads. I have a 16-core, 32-thread CPU, and it's, it's kind of crazy <laughs> how much of that it's actually able to use even at these kind of lower frame rates. Now it looks like depending on the scene, our, our, our frame rate can uh, be quite a bit better. So like flying down this street, we're, we're up uh, around 50, 55. And this is native 4K. So honestly, I feel like the GPU is capable of, of performing pretty well here. It's really, I think, all of this city simulation that's causing our problems. But let's go ahead and see how the uh, super resolution performs on this GPU. All right, so here we are at a 67% resolution scale, which would be rendering at about 1440p internally and then upscaling to 4K. One exciting thing here is I think the TSR super resolution that we're seeing in this is a pretty good indication of what to expect from FSR 2.0. They're not going to be identical. But I would say that this does a, a very, very good job at resolving all of the distant details to look like a native 4K image, although there is noticeable ghosting and blur on the objects that are in motion, like the people and vehicles walking around in the distance. Also notice that we haven't really got much of a frame rate improvement here by dropping down to 67% resolution scaling, further indicating that it's not the GPUs that are, uh, you know, the limit in this demo. I think it really is the uh, something going on with what's going on in the city, all of that. Although on my 3080, I saw that turning down some of the settings in the config file was able to reduce some of this bottleneck and get further performance out of the GPUs. So we'll definitely be testing that out as well. So you can see here that performance hasn't changed much despite the resolution scale. And yes, it really did resolution scale. I'm not, uh, you know, didn't just accidentally forget to use that in the config file. By the way, on just a random note, one difference I'm noticing between AMD and NVIDIA here isn't really related to the game, but using MSI Afterburner. On my NVIDIA cards, the game crashes if I have MSI Afterburner uh, monitoring the statistics when I launch it. I have to launch it and then turn it on, but on my AMD cards, I'm able to just leave it running, like, you know, it should work. <laughs> and the game doesn't crash when launching. So anyway, that's some kind of random difference between the two. 
All right, let's go ahead and try a 50% scale, and then we'll try turning down some settings. All right, this is now a 50% resolution scale up outputting at 4K, which means we're running the game internally at 1080p and then using the temporal super resolution. And once again, it's doing a fantastic job of reconstructing details in the distance, although it's objects in motion where the native 1080p render becomes a lot more apparent. And now we can clearly see that the GPU is not the limiting factor. We're stuck here at, in the mid 40s on the FPS, and yet the GPU utilization is down well below 100%, and it's very clearly not the limiting factor. So I don't think we really need to do much of a loop through the city here before we just start turning down some settings and trying to figure out Maybe in this one I'll have time to isolate more of exactly what the problem is. I know on my 3080, when I turned all the way down to 1 from 3 is where we noticed a big improvement. Um, although I was doing all of the settings at the same time, so I'm curious if there's a particular setting that is most of the culprit on the, uh, the bottleneck here. See the GPU utilization even dipping into the 40% range at times. So it's clearly the GPUs are able to handle a lot more, especially at 1080p here, than what the, um, the city simulation or whatever else is going on here is, is, is limiting it. So I, I think if you're scared about future Unreal Engine games, just keep in mind that most of them probably aren't going to be trying to do everything that this demo is doing. Also, actual launch games will probably be more optimized. All right, so I've now set all the settings in the config file down to two instead of the default of three, so I'm gonna call that medium, despite the fact that maybe that corresponds to what Unreal Engine would call high and the other one was epic or whatever. Anyway, I've left it on the 50% resolution scale because I want to make sure that if we relieve the CPU bottleneck, we start to see an improved frame rate. So I want to keep the GPU load low resolution wise so we start to see when we jump. Notice that our frame rate here is still kind of stuck in the mid 40s. So it doesn't seem like going down to the uh, medium or number two settings are really doing much improvement wise. Let's see if it makes any difference actually flying through the city but I, I don't have my hopes up, guys. <laughs> yeah, we're still dipping to 30 FPS at times, even below. Jeez, is this actually worse? <laughs> that frame time graph all over the place. In motion, and again, I don't know how well this gets through YouTube compression, and you guys might not be on a 4K screen, but in motion, the resolution scaler is not quite as impressive as it is standing still, but it does still to my eye look a lot better than if I just set the game to 1080p natively on my 4K screen. Um, I also think it looks a lot better than something like FSR 1.0, which can't really add any detail back in through the temporal data. All right, let's go ahead and drop the settings further. Okay, so I've now set all the graphic settings in the config file down to 1 instead of 2, and remember the default originally was at 3. And we can now see the frame rate has jumped massively. The GPU is still not fully utilized, meaning that the GPU is still capable of a lot more. This has relieved some, but not all, of the bottleneck that was capping our frame rate to the mid-40s. and. I don't know yet exactly which setting dropping down to one did this, or if there's a combination of them. So that might be something we'll want to explore in a minute if I have time. <laughs> Remember, I do this channel as a hobby. So like right now, I got up early in the morning to run some testing and make a video before my kids get up, you know? <laughs> anyway, uh, let's fly around a bit. I remember my 3080 at these settings, I think was performing very similarly, where it would dip into the mid 50s at times, but for the most part was in the mid 60s and would jump up into the 70s at times as well. Looks like we're even getting into the 90s at times here, which is interesting. 
but it does once again seem like we are not GPU limited at any point here flying around the city. This this does seem to be a uh, still limited by other factors going on here. Definitely notice worse graphics at these settings, by the way. Like just something's wrong with like the, the shadows and reflections on the vehicle, like under the vehicles. There's still clearly some shadows from the sun, but I feel like the vehicles and things aren't casting shadows and I mean, there's other changes as well. Like out here in the sunlight, they do. But yeah, there's there's definitely some differences in the lighting and shadow engine and reflections and all that. It does look noticeably worse than than it did at the higher settings. All right, let's let's nail down some other setting changes here. Well, I think I've figured it out, guys. <laughs> Off camera, I just restarted the game over and over and over again, changing each setting to one while leaving the others at three, and it's the global illumination. Right now, I have everything set to three except for global illumination set to one. This is also the 50% resolution scale. So we can see now that that's the one that did it. That was what jumped me from in the mid 40s up to around 70. But what's interesting to me then is the global illumination, I, I would assume would be heavy on the GPU, but the GPU <laughs> wasn't maxed out. So I don't know. I don't know why that, uh, is it running a lot on the CPU? Honestly, I, I'm not a, a game developer. I don't know about this, this stuff. I, I just test things and, and play around and make videos, guys. Anyway, I think we can actually try turning the resolution up to actually reach more of a GPU limit. So I'm curious if at 4K native, with just the global illumination turned down, uh, what kind of performance we would be getting. So let's test that out. Okay, this is now native 4K. No upsampling required. Everything set to 3, except for global illumination set to 1 and we can see that we are well over 60 FPS. We're into the 70s, although I'm sure while moving and flying around, we're gonna see that dip. In post-processing, I'm putting a side-by-side -side here so you guys will see better than me, but I can definitely, I think, tell there's a difference with the global illumination down at one in terms of the shadows under the cars and people. So, so I think there's definitely a hit to the visual quality, although it's really nice that we can leave everything else set higher. Let's start flying around while I give some more thoughts, although I'm betting some of you wish I had left the motion blur down low. I know that's a personal preference thing, but um, I think it's the post-processing effect. Uh, if you set that to one, you get little to no motion blur. But right now, I just wanted to isolate the cause of the performance issues. It does seem to be the global illumination. You can see now we're flying around at native 4K with just the GI turned down to one, and we're doing well here. Although, like I said, I, I do feel like there is a difference to the visual quality. It's nice that everything else can be turned up. We don't just need to turn everything down in order to get good performance. Once again, though, maybe some of you guys know more about this than me, but I'm surprised not that global illumination would make such a difference to performance, but that it didn't seem to be a GPU limit. So is the global illumination being calculated on the CPU? Or at least large portions of it? I know that um, in normal ray tracing titles, I, I think Lumen is more of a software ray tracing rather than hardware ray tracing, but um, I know that in normal ray tracing games, turning on ray tracing does increase the CPU load. So I guess maybe that's not too surprising. Ooh, this is a cramped street here. Okay, <laughs> It's not too surprising, I guess, if I think about it that way. Um, but I, I guess I was kind of surprised by this. But now, playing at 4K with just that one setting turned down, it actually seems like very, very playable. I, I think I, I would still like the frame time graph to be a bit smoother. You can definitely still see some spikes and dips below 60. Um, but we got some big, big dips here. <laughs> Part of that I think is also just a shader caching thing because like before I started filming this at all, on any of my GPUs. Whenever I swap in a new GPU, I always fly around the city for a bit and then restart the demo because the first time I load this up, 
it always absolutely chugs and stutters because I think um, this demo wasn't compiled in a way that like forces it to do shader compilation, uh, which it should do to load in shaders uh, before your first time playing it. So it's possible that my uh, practice runs through the city off camera weren't completely catching like every asset that it might need to load in. And as we see in a lot of DX12 games that don't properly precast shaders, that um, the first time you load an asset will cause a, a frame rate spike. So that could definitely be contributing to the little frame rate spikes that we're seeing as well. All right, guys, I'm really excited for the future of games in this engine. I think that they have the potential to look beautiful. And I'm stuck in my car here. And I think that this video has accomplished what it needed to accomplish. So I'm going to go ahead and wake up my kids and edit this video later and probably get it out to you tomorrow. Have an excellent day.